Twickenham. Thanks for being here together this morning. It is good to come together, both in person and online, as God's people. If you're a guest, thank you for joining with us. If we can help you in any way, please let us know. Today is an exciting day for Twickenham, and our service is going to be a little bit different this morning as we add three men to our number of elders. That will take us from nine elders to a good biblical number of twelve. The elders are the one in scripture that are tasked to take care of God's people. We also call them shepherds. As shepherds, they are called to lead, show compassion, direct, correct, listen, love, watch over, and have a heart for God's people. It is a formidable task. In his book, The Way of the Shepherd, Dr. Kevin Lehman states, what makes a shepherd a shepherd isn't the staff or the rod, it's the heart. What distinguishes a great leader from a mediocre one is that a great leader has a heart for his people. He goes on to say that great leadership comes at a price that far too willing, that far too many are willing to pay. Our elders care for this church, pray for this church, and are committed to the membership here. Each has a heart for this church, and we are blessed to have these 12 men watching over Twickenham. Now this is probably the longest window in our history from taking nominations to having this ordination service. We started this January 19th with hopes of having this service on April 26th and then COVID happened. Although delayed, we are enthusiastic about today's events and how Twickenham is postured for the future. 
Today we will read God's word to the elders. We will also consider God's word to the church. And several of our previous elders will be participating in the service. I hope that today's service is a blessing. Let's begin with prayer. God, thank you for today. Thank you for the sunshine. Thank you for all the ways that you bless us. God, we just pray that your spirit is among us this morning and working. We pray that you will bless and protect those men that are called to lead this church and to watch over the shepherds. Be with them, be with their families, and just keep them in your care. May all that we do, may all that we say, be done for no other reason to bring glory and honor to your name. Thank you so much for Jesus and in the hope that we have in him. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Let's stand. The Apostle Paul wrote to Timothy regarding the growing church in Ephesus. He specifically instructed him on directions for appointing overseers. I'll be reading from the first Timothy chapter three, verses one through seven, which specifically addresses the appointment of overseers or elders. Here is a trustworthy saying, if anyone sets his heart on being an overseer, he desires a noble task. Now the overseer must be above reproach, the husband of but one wife, temperate, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not given to drunkenness, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money, he must manage his own family well and see that his children obey him with proper respect. If anyone does not know how to manage his own family, how can he take care of God's church? He must not be a recent convert or he may become conceited and fall under the same judgment as the devil. He must also have a good reputation with outsiders 
so that he will not fall into disgrace and into the devil's trap. Greetings with my continuing love and deep affection for the Twickenham Church. The Apostle Paul wrote to his fellow evangelist Titus qualities that he should pursue in those he was selecting as elders in the churches. Paul wrote to Titus, an elder must be blameless, the husband of but one wife, a man whose children believe and are not open to the charge of being wild and disobedient. Since an overseer is entrusted with God's work, he must be blameless, not overbearing, not quick-tempered, not given to drunkenness, not violent, not pursuing dishonest gain. Rather, he must be hospitable, with self-control, upright, holy, and disciplined. He must hold firmly to the trustworthy message as it has been taught, so that he may encourage others by sound doctrine and refute those who oppose it. Good morning, Twickenham. It's great to be with you this morning, even if virtually and asynchronously. Congratulations on your selection of new shepherds, and I pray God's blessings on them, all the leadership, and all of you as you strive to reflect God's glory in Huntsville, Ecuador, and many other places. Let's hear this word of encouragement from St. Peter. Therefore, I have a request for the elders among you. I ask this as a fellow elder and a witness of Christ's sufferings, and as one who shares in the glory that is about to be revealed. I urge the elders, like shepherds, tend the flock of God among you. Watch over it. Don't shepherd because you must, but do it voluntarily for God. Don't shepherd greedily, but do it eagerly. Don't shepherd by ruling over those entrusted to your care, but become examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive an unfading crown of glory. There's a place where mercy reigns and never dies. There's a place where streams of grace flow deep and wide. Where all the love I've ever found comes by.
And Jesus called them together and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Holy Father, we thank you for our time together this morning. Father, we thank you for your son. And this morning, as we, as one family, come together to remember, we thank you for the sacrifice that you made and allowing your son to become human and to walk on this earth. Father, this, this time we are ask you to bless this bread that to us as Christians represents that very body of Jesus Christ. And it's through the blessed name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Hello, church. Uh, it's good to be with you, and especially for the shepherds and the new shepherds. Uh, uh, it's good to connect with you, and welcome to the new shepherds. I know you're going to appreciate the journey, uh, and we appreciate your service. The reading today is from Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God, which he bought with you with his own blood. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we do thank you so much for your sacrifice, uh, the ultimate sacrifice, and we, we celebrate your blood at this time and the love that that represents. We hope, Lord, that you would uh, challenge our shepherds to have similar sacrifice and commitment to your church and challenge our members to also be so, uh, so committed to your work 
and so devoted to your love. In remembrance of you, God, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. So, uh, Billy and Autumn and uh, Tanner and Caroline, could you guys come on up? Uh, I wanted to point out one thing that somebody asked me about a little bit earlier. The, the dates that you saw on the screen uh, for those elders were not the dates of their births and deaths. I had to explain that. Okay, that was the dates of their service. So we heard uh, from those, uh, those former elders, all of whom are still alive, uh, we heard from those former elders God's word to the, uh, to the elders, to shepherds, to overseers. And so we wanted to also hear God's word to the church, especially is how it relates to how we respond to uh, support and follow the leading of our shepherds. So we've asked uh, four of our younger members uh, to share that word with us, Billy and Autumn Knox. Autumn is one of our youth ministers. Uh, Adam and his wife Sarah are out of town today. Uh, they'll be sharing some scriptures. And then Tanner and Carolyn Mayfield will be sharing some scriptures with us. And I want you to listen because this is what God's word says to us, the church, those of us who are gathered here, those of us who are at home, it's what God's word says to us about how we respond to the leading of our shepherds. Let's hear the word of the Lord. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. 
If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. In the same way, you who are younger, submit yourselves to your elders. All of you clothe yourselves with humility toward one another, because God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Keep on loving one another as brothers and sisters. Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing so, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Have confidence in your leaders and submit to their authority because they keep watch over you as those who must give an account. Do this so that their work will be a joy, not a burden, for that would be of no benefit to you. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with the oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Thank you guys so much. So uh, I want to have all the elders come up on stage, the elders and their wives. Uh, and uh, I would like for the most recent, the, newer, the new additions to stand kind of right here on the stairs. This is uh, one of my favorite times of year when I get to direct the elders and tell them what to do. It's, it's awesome. And it's the only time that they actually do what I ask them to do. So. <laughs> so uh, our newest elders uh, is Clark and Janet Anderson uh, to your left right here, James and Mary, and then Mike and Cindy. Uh, we are blessed to have all of these shepherds. I will tell you that having been in ministry for decades, this is the finest group of elders I've ever had the privilege to serve with. And these, uh, these new guys are going to be no different than that. We are incredibly blessed because uh, every one of these guys has a great heart. Their wives are in it 100%. Uh, I will tell you that the staff and the shepherds have an incredibly uh, unified relationship. We get along extremely well. We don't always agree. But we, we get along extremely well. And when we disagree, we do it in love. And we move toward the better decision because of uh, the times that we are uh, not quite on the same page. We're just so blessed to have that kind of relationship. And we want to welcome these three new shepherding families as they join the group. Uh, one, of the, one of the things I want to tell you about what this means for our church, the fact that we are adding new elders, additional elders, means that we believe in the future of this church and of the church universal. We do not believe that things are over. We do not, we are not afraid that this is how things are going to be from now on. Adding new leadership right now is this church's way of saying, we believe the future will be better and stronger than the past. We believe that the current mess that we are in is not permanent. We believe that this church and the, ch the church universal are going to grow and are going to need additional leadership. That's the statement we're making today. Bill Bass has been uh, one of our elders that have been serving for a while. He's going to come and deliver a charge uh, and some encouragement to our newest shepherds. And then Tim Logan will uh, share a prayer. Uh, it's, not a, it's a real prayer, but he'll be sharing it virtually. Bill? Thank you, sir. I know you wanted to say the old elders don't present this. 
Twickenham is a, a unique place. The Twickenham shepherds are and have always been a diverse collection of men with very different strengths and gifts, and that is certainly no different today. There's rarely complete agreement on almost any topic. That has been the history of Twickenham, and it has always been a place where people are encouraged to think and study and pray and come to their own conclusions. Because of this, this congregation has always been considered a little radical by a few others in our, men, in our faith. Uh, that's okay. Twickenham has, has flourished and is, and is a stronger spiritual place because of it. This congregation has always been considered a little radical, and you shepherds are not expected to have all the answers, and our, own, and our strength comes from the trust and the mutual respect that binds us together in a congregation and as a group of shepherds. We do not always agree, but we agree to respect the consensus of the group. We, the existing shepherds, are grateful for your willingness to take on this role as a shepherd. We're grateful to your wives and your families for being a part of your service. And we're grateful to the members of this congregation for placing their trust and confidence in a small group of men to take on this role. We are grateful to God for the opportunities to serve together with you. Several years ago, when I was becoming a shepherd, two of the, two of the existing shepherds, Lynn Brooks, who we heard from earlier, and, and Delbert Williams, who have passed on, took me to lunch and gave me some, inf some uh, direction and guidance for being successful in this role, and I'd like to pass some of that along to you. Number one, the first priority is to serve God in humility, always. Listen more than you speak. Seek answers from God through study and prayer. Trust the leading of the Holy Spirit that lies within you. Seek the counsel of your fellow shepherds and respect the collective wisdom of the group. Admit it when you are wrong, and sometimes you will be. Do not be afraid to speak the truth in love. Pray consistently for this congregation, its members, and its leadership. Care for and nurture the flock. Remember that your efforts, your service, and your life should always honor our Lord Jesus Christ. These are unique times in the world around us. They call for prayer, for study, for courage, and for strong leadership. And I am confident that you, Clark, Mike, and James, have been chosen by God for this task for such a time as this. From number six. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. As a former elder, I've been asked to pray over our elders. If you would join me, please. Thank you, Lord, for all of the elders who have served our family at Twingham so faithfully. I remember Delbert Williams talking to a group of us searching for a new church home. I felt his servant heart and love as he talked to us. And eventually Marla and I placed membership here. I've been blessed greatly by the men I served with while I was an elder. Some have gone on to their reward. Stan, Travis, Hoy, and Lloyd helped me to become a better servant and have a, been an inspiration in my life. God, I thank you and ask a blessing over our current elders, Bill, Walton, Dan, Tom, Steve, John, Lee, Ken, and Todd, along with our new elders, Mike, James, and Clark. At times, it can be very difficult to serve as an elder. God, I ask you to protect them from the devil. And God, leadership can take a toll on you. I ask you to provide strength and good health that these men will be able to fulfill your ministry. I ask that you bless these men with wisdom. Provide them with spiritual insight to make decisions. Help them to know their flock. 
we pray for diversity. And with that comes many differing views. Help us to understand what a blessing it is that God made us all different. Help our elders as we go through this pandemic to continue to find ways to minister to the flock. Instead of holding hands in prayer, it may be calling us and praying over us or through email or whatever way the Spirit leads them. I pray you will bless them with an ever-growing understanding of your word and help them as they guide us in sound doctrine and godly counsel. I pray for unity among our elders. That is not to say they all agree on everything, but as an eldership, they stand as one. Continue to be with them in their vision for our family as we try to reach out to others and show others love in our community. Help our elders to not just maintain our church, but help it to grow, to minister to others. Bless our elders as they show us godly love and compassion. God, I lift up their wives and children. Bless them and protect them as they stand with their husband and dad. Also, thank you for our united staff that works with our elders as a team. What a blessing that is. God, may your blessings continue on our family. As I close this prayer, I pray that as a family, we will submit to the elders' authority as they keep watch over us. One day, they will give an account for each of us. May their work be a joy and not a burden. God, we all make mistakes at times, but thank you for Jesus. And it is only through his grace and mercy we are who we are. And one day we'll be able to enjoy heaven together. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give these guys a hand. And you guys can sit down. We're going to sing one more song. You want to stand? Are we going to stand for this song? No, I was going to dismiss them. Oh, you guys go, go sit down. It's the only time I get to instruct me. Let's stand. Let us be faithful, faithful, faithful. Let us be faithful, faithful, Lord. Though we cannot see. Thank you.
our children's minister, Amy Smith. As she's coming, let me remind you, we got virtual Bible class Wednesday night. Uh, you can pick up that online. Also, there's a wedding shower for Clark Dowdy next Sunday afternoon. That's a drive-by wedding shower again uh, next Sunday, so make plans for that. And this special word. Good morning, church. I'm so glad they gave me 20 minutes to talk to you this morning. <laughs> Uh, I am very excited to announce that starting next Sunday, we will again be offering uh, children's programming during the worship hour. We will be offering that for the nursery, preschool, and for our grade school. This is going to be during the worship hour. Um, some of you probably have forgotten where you might belong, but just go to the last location you remember taking your child. Uh, we will not be promoting right now, so uh, next week during um, the worship service, we will have that programming. So nursery up here, two, two nurseries upstairs, preschool will all be together downstairs, and then kindergarten through fifth grade will be in the gym. I'm very excited about this. I know there's going to be a variety of opinions about what we should do, how we should do it, when we should do it. Uh, we will be working on some specific policy on check-in and pick-up this week. You will be receiving an email about all of that. Um, please, uh, you can help us in, in several ways. Uh, one, if you are willing to volunteer and help with kids, please let me know. Two, you can be praying for us, pray for safety for our kids. We certainly want uh, to be able to continue to offer um, opportunities for your kids to express and worship like they should be. And so that's why we are opening these children's programs back up. I will uh, end with this. I'm very excited about this. Yesterday, um, I was equally excited to finally be able to have an opportunity to get with um, some of our kids. It was our annual rite of passage where our fifth graders move up to the youth group and we have go on a trip. And while we didn't get to go out of town this year, I took um, our graduating fifth graders and some teenagers with Autumn over to the Vision and we were going to have a zip lining experience, which was awesome. It was so fun. And I I'm hiking up there, just so excited to be with the kids. And then they attach me to a metal string and say, you're going to be going down this uh, 900 feet what uh, string. And at the end, when you're going to reach about 10 to 12 miles an hour, there's going to be this chain lock that stops you. And I was like, oh, my goodness, what in the world have I done? My, my excitement plummeted right there. Um, <laughs> it was very fun, but this 50-year-old was very nervous about being stopped at 12 miles an hour. Um, and uh, I hope that next week is, is not as hard as yesterday was for me, but there are no guarantees. So uh, thank you. I'm very excited about it, and be, parents be looking for more information about that. That was very exciting. <laughs> I didn't get any of that yesterday. Where did that come from? <laughs> hey, thanks for being here. And as is our custom, since this pandemic started back in March, we close with this if you'd like to join me. May the amazing grace of Jesus bless you and give you peace. Have a great week. Hallelujah, amen, praises to him we bring, hallelujah, amen, with grateful heart and voice, before his throne rejoice, praises his gracious choice, hallelujah, amen.